So it's talking about Bradford uh, assay. Uh, you will have to basically add uh, uh, chromogenic reagent to your protein. So the reason is, you know, protein molecules do not have uniform structure. Depends on its amino acid sequences. Uh, their uh, light absorbance pattern are totally different. Okay, so like uh, amino acids with aromatic ring structure will absorb. They tend to absorb uh, more light. But what if your protein doesn't have a lot of those aromatic ring structure amino acids like tryptophan, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and things like that. And although it has certain concentration, it's not going to absorb as much as light as the one has a lot of those, right? So that's why protein concentration assay using UV light is not really good. So instead, you have to use color chromogenic substance. So Bradford will use chromogenic substance called uh, uh, the Kumasi blue, this is the dye solution uh, that will give you blue color. So it can absorb uh, the visible light range, uh, I think 590 uh, or something like 95, okay, that area very well. Okay, And then especially this uh, Kumasi blue uh, has a very good absorbance and the linear relationship between the absorbance and the protein concentration between like 5 to uh, 50 microgram per mil uh, range. Okay. So, uh, to use that, uh, I, I told you you have to come up with your own standard curve uh, to get that uh, linear relationship. Okay? So, for your quantification of two unknown BSA, first thing you want to do is you want to create a standard curve okay? using uh, maybe BSA sample that is given to you. You create a series of deletions. Okay? For example, I, I give you this table. So, you create maybe six tubes. Okay, that contains no BSA so, uh, protein at all, and then a little bit of more, more BSA, maybe 2 microgram, microgram 5, 10, 20, 40 microgram, okay, that's the, serial, uh, the concentration, various concentration from 0 to 40, right, microgram per mil, and then to that, you're going to add uh, water, a certain amount of water, and then you determine how much of the stock solution, which you could just in certain concentration you will be given. Maybe it's that concentration, 10 microgram per microliter. If you think that's hard to um, maybe pipette, you can maybe further dilute it. Okay, maybe make it maybe uh, two, uh, one microgram per microliter if you want, that's fine. And then add uh, the right volume to get those microgram. Okay, and to that, and uh, uh, you will add certain amount of water uh, to get about 800 total microliter volume made. And once you have 800 microliter volume made, and to each tube, you will add 200 microliter of that um, Bradford uh, dye solution to it. So the total volume in each tube will be 1,000 uh, microliter. Okay, once you make uh, this, so blank will be used as uh, 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 I guess the caliber. Uh, the, the sample that will calibrate, meaning, you know, the absorbance will be zero because there's no protein there. So you'll calibrate the spectrophotometer using blank. And then, so the baseline is set up. And then you're going to measure the absorbance of these samples. Okay. So hopefully it'll be linear from zero to whatever, just like this. You know, as there's more BSA concentration going up in your sample, the absorbance will go up as well. Okay, so hopefully that, that's what you're going to see. Once you did that, then um, you write down all the, uh, the absorbance at 595 nanometer, actually. That's the visible line. And you will write down the absorbance reading, and then you're going to plot a standard curve using a computer software. And we'll give you a laptop computer with the Excel, and then I'll show you how to plot, and you will get a standard curve made, something like that. And from the curve, you'll generate the slope, which is y equals a x plus the uh, y intercept and once you have the uh, slope made actually the intercept will be zero because you know when concentration is zero the absorbance is zero okay and then the a value the slope is important so that a value sums up the relationship between the absorbance and then uh, concentration okay and once that's done you have the equation to solve uh, the uh, concentration of your unknown samples so you will probably dilute uh, your unknown samples 
Uh, so this is the instruction on how you can get 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 the standard curve made, and from the standard curve you get the equation and the R scale value. Okay, so from the vast fit line. Uh, so we'll talk about that when you get to do the lab hands-on, and then with your unknown uh, protein samples, uh, I want you to uh, make dilutions. Okay, maybe one to hundred dilution because each tube maybe have like fifty or less than a hundred microliter. So take. 10 microliter of each sample, and mix that with 790 microliter water, and then add, so that will give you 800 microliter, right? And then add 200 microliter of the breath for reagent and mix them up, okay? And then do the observance measurements. Uh, you will hopefully still have the blank from here, so you can calibrate your machine using the blank, okay? And you get the observance value, okay? And once you get the observance value, uh, then what? That observance value can be plugged in to uh, the equation you're going to get from your standard curve. So equation will be y equals ax, right? So y will be, if you plot it maybe uh, this way, then y value will be the observance. So you plug in uh, your observance to the y value in the equation, or if you do it the other way around, maybe the x value will be the observance. So whichever, whichever the way you you know, develop your standard curve, that's fine. You make sure you plug in your observance value to the right uh, place, either x or y. Then you solve the equation for uh, your unknown uh, concentration, okay? So then it will give you what the concentration of your sample is, and to that you multiply 100, the dilution factor. That's how you can get uh, your concentration uh, estimated, okay? So that's it. Uh, again, you know, this is a brief introduction of what you'll be doing in the lab, and I will go over this with you when you get to do the hands-on part in the lab. All right? Thank you.